Hi everyone, my name is Rachel and welcome to The French Seams. Thanks so much for joining me again for another video. This is all about my autumn makes. So I put out a few weeks ago all about my autumn plans. I didn't want to tie myself down to a particular month and I think it worked out really, really well. There was no pressure on me to get anything done. I did them if and when I could and we're now at the middle of November. So I think that's pretty good going. I would still call this autumn-ish. So I'm very excited to show you what I made. So um, I'm wearing one of them right now, but I'll hold on to that until the end of the video. Um, yes, I love this. Spoiler alert, I love it. So before I get started, I'd just like to say a big thank you to everybody who's liked any of my previous videos, who's left a comment, who has subscribed. I really, really do appreciate it. So thank you very, very much. And also to everybody who's watched my Gift to November vlog as well. And that challenge is still ongoing. So there's still time if you'd like to get involved in that challenge. It's really, really great. And I'll link to it below and just search the hashtag a Gift to November and all our lovely videos will pop up. So one of the first, first things I got made up in October was um, bunting for my little boy because he turned four in October and there's a tradition now that I always make my little boys bunting for their birthdays. And because his birthday is very close to Halloween and because he loves Halloween, it's Halloween bunting. So it came out really, really well. This beautiful uh, pumpkin cotton poplin fabric uh, came from um, Carlo Fabrics. And then I just got an orange binding just to go along with it. And this came out really, really well. It looked really great in the house um, for Halloween. Um, it's just, um, I just do this bunting for a various num number of reasons throughout the year. And I just do a five by seven inch um, little triangle and it works out really, really well. So to get the most out of the fabric, they're upside down on the back. But yeah, so I got all of this out of, I think, half a metre as well, along with two little trick-or-treat bags for my boys. Still in the same fabric. And these are following um, a tutorial that I put up on my channel a little while ago. I linked it below on how to make a little tote bag. So a very, very simple uh, lined tote bag with a little um, boxed off bottom. So these were perfect for all their sweets and they both got a load of sweets trick or treating. They were delighted. They now think Halloween is the best invention ever. So I lined them. I had a bit of orange fleece left over. I made um, little cushion covers at Easter and I think I bought orange fleece for carrots for the bunny so I had that left over and then this lovely webbing came from Ecobee. It's very very handy to have this kind of webbing um, for bag making. I think it's really good and really secure. So I made those two little bags which came out very very well so delighted with those. Following along my um, Halloween vibes, so we're we're big into Halloween in this house, we really are, um, my little boy's dinosaur costume. So this is probably one of my favourite thing to, things to make so far this year. So the pattern is by Peekaboo Patterns and it's called the Ultimate Costume Creator. So a little while ago, I asked my little boy what you'd like to be for Halloween and he said a dinosaur. So I've always wanted to make um, a costume for them for, for Halloween. So when he said a dinosaur, I went looking on Instagram, looking on Pinterest, looking on Google, everywhere to try to find a dinosaur costume. And there was a few of the big four ones, but they didn't look quite right. And then I came across this pattern company on Etsy and it just looked perfect. So I'll pop in some uh, line drawings here. You can basically make any animal out of this. It is fabulous. I think you can even make a little Ghostbusters costume because it's basically just a kind of a boiler suit. Then you can put a collar or you can put a hood. It's absolutely fabulous. So I was able to make a dinosaur. So he wanted to be a blue dinosaur because blue is his favourite colour. So I got navy fleece and green fleece because he wanted the spikes to be green. I got this fleece from the fabric counter and it's absolutely perfect. It washes beautifully. It's very easy to sew with. And um, plus when he was at uh, trick-or-treating, he wasn't cold. So win-win. So it was just the most fabulous pattern. It really, really was. So it's just um, a jumpsuit, basically. And I used uh, just dropping things, as I always do. A cotton jersey for the leg cuffs and the um, cuffs, the arm cuffs as well. And then I used cotton jersey as the lining for the hood just to make it a little bit more comfortable. Then the spikes go all the way along the hood and all the way down the back and then all the way onto the tail, which is fabulous. So to stuff the spikes and the tail, um, I got a huge big bag of toy stuffing from um, Vibes and Scribes down in Cork. And my little boy loved stuffing the little tail one day and he was poorly kept him occupied for ages stuffing this. Um, it was just fabulous. So there are all the spikes and they look really, really effective. So it's pretty straightforward to put in actually. It's so, um, if you've made 
a jumper. It's, it's similar because you're just putting, say, a hood onto a bodice, which is great, but you just join the two bodice pieces at the back and sandwich in these little spikes. That, that bit is a little bit tricky. I did use a zipper foot because obviously you've got a huge big amount of bulk on one side, but, but even saying that with the fleece and, and the spikes, it still went in pretty easily. The hood is in two pieces. You can see a seam here, and I think that's more to do with if you put ears on your costume. So that's where the ears sit out, but I didn't need to in, in this, so it is just still a two-piece hood, which is fine. Then then at his request he wanted teeth so I got a little strip of felt and just cut out little zigzags and then I sandwiched that into my um, hood when I was making it up so you can see there's a theme going along here and um, so then it came together really really well the only other difference I made was um, a lovely lady contacted me to say she had made a costume recently and she or few years ago and she had put this oval panel on the front to hide the zip which I thought was a great idea so I did that so it's just got a little piece of velcro here and this is where the zip is and the zip went in really easily as well really really good and then you can just cover that over then I put in a little trick or treat so anonymous label here which is very very cute and very appropriate if you can notice a few stains in it that's because it's covered in chocolate and sweets because he was eating so many chocolate and sweets on Halloween so this is going to go in the wash and going to be put away until maybe my other little boy might like it in a few years or we'll see how it goes. But he has already requested another dinosaur for next year and he wants it to be rainbow. I am fine with that. I think we'll have great fun making another dinosaur. But to be fair, you can make any animal you like out of this, this pattern. It is absolutely fabulous. So this pattern has a pretty good size range for children. So my little boy measured to an age four, which is spot on because he's four and uh, the fit is absolutely spot on. It's perfect, fits him perfectly lengthwise and everything. It's really, really great. And um, yeah, he can get in and out of it now himself, which he's delighted about. <laughs> so it is just the cutest pattern. I'll pop in a few pictures of him wearing it. So very, very pleased. Oh, another thing I did was I just put in a bit of neck binding um, along here because the it, there was a kind of a bulky seam with the, the two layers for the hood and then the bodice and the spikes. So I just kind of Cover that over with a bit of binding just to make it a little bit more secure but all in all it's a really really fun really satisfying make if you wanted any animal a unicorn a bear a monkey a dog anything then this pattern can do it so i would highly highly recommend it and it's just wonderful it really is there are a fair um, number of pattern pieces to cut out but once you keep in mind what you need and where you need to put it it's absolutely fine and it's really really good fun so i would encourage anybody if they need to make a dinosaur or any animal to go for this peekaboo pattern, the ultimate costume creator. It's really, really good. I, I can't speak high enough of it. I really can't. And uh, I'll link the Etsy um, store down below where you can pick it up. And it's just fabulous. It really, really is. So enough about Halloween. We'll move on, shall we? Um, another thing I got made up um, in autumn was the buggy bag. So we have um, a buggy, obviously. It's an upper baby buggy and we had it for my older boy and now we use it all the time for my younger boy. So it gets an awful, awful, awful lot of use. So, and you can buy a specific buggy bag for that buggy, but I didn't want to do that. I wanted to make my own. And I found this beautiful William Morris print fabric in the Crafty Studio and I just thought it was divine. So I wanted to make the little bag. So then Anne-Marie said, how about making it um, waterproof or water resistant? So she has what's called Lama Fix and you iron it on a bit like interfacing. Oh, my sunglasses are in here. Um, and then you iron it on and it becomes um, a little bit water resistant, which is fabulous. I've done that on the inside. So I won't hold it up too much because it's very rustly. Um, so I've just made a little pocket here for my phone. Just measured my phone, sewed that in. Then I have roughly um, based it on my tote bag pattern. I've just basically made it um, wider and shorter because it's got the box step bottoms as well. It's fully lined. And then I just, instead of the straps here, I just inserted two straps on the very edge. I did a little bit of binding at the top just to neaten it off a little bit and then I put this onto the buggy, measured where I wanted the arms to flap in like this and then put in some snaps. So I've got, um, can you see them, little heart shaped snaps, heart shaped snaps there, the little prim ones that you squeeze in with pliers which is just the best invention ever and it came out really well so it just hangs on the buggy like this. And you can put, I fit my phone and my sunglasses, I think I had 
a random zebra toy in it, all these kind of things. Um, so it's very, very cute and came together really well. So it's broadly in line with that tote bag pattern that I, I did a few months ago, but I'll put in the dimensions and um, hopefully put in a few pictures of um, when I used it last week at the zoo. But yeah, just really happy with it. I just think print is so beautiful and these little red snaps go very, very well with it as well. So very happy with this. And yeah, um, if you want to check out that llama fix, it's pretty cool. It, it looks like it, um, it looks like almost cling film or greasy paper and then you put it down on the right side of your fabric and put a pressing cloth or a piece of greasy paper over it and iron it on a very low heat and you can see it bonding to your fabric but it's it's pretty cool pretty nifty piece of kit if you ask me so this is my little buggy bag which i'm very very happy with next up is this and it's a roscoe blouse so it wasn't originally meant to be a roscoe blouse it was originally meant to be a kin yarling dress by waves and wild the fabric is the most beautiful um viscose twill from crafty studio in black kind of difficult to come out on screen and i wanted to make the kin yarling dress it's a kind of um a uh, loose uh, fitting dress with a bodice and a gathered skirt and uh, grown on sleeves and you can make it with a button placket there's a hack for doing that so that's what I wanted to make because it has very nice pocket details and I love waves and wild patterns anyway and looked really really nice however I got around to making it and it just didn't work it just didn't work and um, the style didn't suit me Um, you interface some piece some piece of the fabric but in this fabric it meant that the other pieces then stretched too much and the interfacing didn't stretch and it was just it, it just did not work it really just didn't so I loved this fabric so much that I really really was keen to make something out of it so I put aside my kinyarling thoughts and I turned to the Roscoe blouse which is by Two Bias. So I do have a few of these and I really really like it. So it's got a neck binding here and it's gathered, you can't really see it in black, but all the neckline is gathered and then it's got a little kind of keyhole opening here which, is, which has a nice little um, facing on the inside. Then it's just loose and flowing. And then I do um, a little elasticated cuffs, although there is an actual um, a cuff binding piece that comes with a pattern. So I thought that I could use the skirt and the bits in the bodice from the Kinyarling to make this top and I just about squeeze it out. It's a little bit shorter than my other ones, but it's absolutely fine. So very happy that I managed to rescue that because, yeah, it just... When things don't go your way and things start to go wrong and you have an idea in your mind and it's not working, it's difficult to claw your way back. But we got there. And I was really, really keen to make something like this because I really wanted to use these beautiful buttons. They're little tiny pumpkins. They're from Buttony Biscuit Base and they are just adorable. They're kind of, um, it's a polymer clay and they've got little the greenery on it. And I really wanted to include those. And I've also got the same as on my little boy's costume, a little trick or treat label. So I wanted to make this little kind of Halloween make. So delighted with how it came out eventually in a roundabout kind of way. Um, and I was also able to enter this into, and I've got the details here, where should I put them? I was able to enter this into the challenge, um, That's So October 22, hosted by She's So Fabulous. So that was great. I think I just made it under the wire on Halloween for this. She was running that competition last year, um, uh, That's So October, and I entered last year's little pumpkin refashion t-shirt as well. So it's a great challenge. So hopefully she'll run that again next year. So basically it's a kind of a, an autumnally october -y make. So I thought this was perfect so very happy with it the only change i made was this little keyhole opening here usually you're meant to um, extend the binding into a little necktie here and you can tie it a little bow but i always felt that the little keyhole thing here was quite low and i wanted to make that into more a button placket to use these beautiful buttons so i attached them to, the, to this side and then i just did little um little tiny thread loops here teresa from lost my thread has a fabulous tutorial i will link it below on how to do thread loops and it became a little button packet which i really really enjoy so yeah really happy with how this came out and um, I will shortly take off these pumpkin buttons and put on these little buttons instead to make it more wearable for the rest of the year that's upside down there you go buttony biscuit base these beautiful um kind of animal print buttons which are really cute so I'm going to put those on this top instead so yeah, that was my Roscoe blouse. So um, I made the size eight. So I think my measurements put me in a size eight of the bust, a 10 of the hips, and a size 10 of the waist and a 12 of the hips. But the size eight, um, the straight size eight is absolutely fine with the amount of ease in this pattern. And yeah, it fits really, really well. It's it's kind of a little bit oversized, but you can tuck it in and it's just a lovely little loose and breezy top. It does have raglan sleeves. Which, um, which make it very, very quick to come together. And it's just very, very comfortable. And it does give beautiful shaping um, around the bust because these beautiful gathers at the neckline. So this is my Roscoe blouse that almost wasn't. 
Next up is what I'm wearing. And this is another make that I absolutely adore. So this is a hack of two patterns. It's the bodice from the Made of Patterns Hug Hoodie, which if you watch my channel, you know I love and they've sadly closed down now. So I hope everybody watching managed to get some patterns from Made of Patterns before they close down. Um, and then for the hood, I put on the Hug Hoodie the hot coffee hoodie uh, from Waves and Wild because I knew I loved this huge big wrap over neckline and they both fit together really, really well. So I'll stand up and this is the hug hoodie. So you can see the little band across here. So I'm just wearing it with jeans and it goes across like this. It's got beautiful long sleeves. I add two inches to the bodice of the hug hoodie because it's quite cropped. I make a size um, 12 in the hug hoodie and I add two inches to the bodice. I don't have to add anything to the sleeves. They're beautifully long, which meant I could add it into the challenge Long Sleeves 22 hosted by the Sewing Warehouse, which is basically a long sleeve garment, which is, and you know how I feel about long sleeves. I'm permanently cold. All my clothes have very, very, very long sleeves. And yes, this is perfect for that challenge. So thank you very, very much. Um, then this has got a, um, a raglan sleeve again, but I was able to just cut that as normal and then cut the um, hoodie from the Waves and Wild hot coffee hoodie pattern and put on the hoodie onto it. And it crosses all the way along here and looks really, really cool. So I love the, the hot coffee hoodie. It's really, really great. I've made the men's version for my husband and you can get a child's version called hot chocolate, which I really, really do need to get. So this is the um, hoodie of two patterns hacked together, which I really, really enjoy. The khaki fabric is a French terry from Crafty Studio, which is lovely. I think I have this in a bluey colour as well that I made a Love Notions Fraser cardigan out of. It's just beautiful. It's really, really nice. And then I wanted to put a frill into the hood. So I did mention this previously and some people thought it was a great idea. Some people did not think it was a good idea. And I wanted originally to make it in this fabric because I thought these colours went so well. But I realised then I didn't have enough of this fabric left. But I did find this beautiful Liberty fabric that my mum had given me ages ago. And I think the colours matched beautifully. So what I did was cut a huge big strip of this fabric, um, gathered it um, with a gathering stitch. And then when you're making the hood, you, you when you sandwich the two pieces together, I just insert the frill there, gathered it all in. So I'd made, I think, I think I'd made notches at, at um, I basically quartered it. So quarter the hood and quarter the frill. And I gathered that all in, pinned loads, and then sewed and hoped for the best. And it worked out. So I don't know, can I put it up? Probably not with the ponytail. But um, some people mentioned it was a little bit Regency, but I'm fine with that. The whole Jane Austen, Pride and Prejudice kind of thing, the, the vibe. I love it. I think it's really, really cute the way it came out, the little frill. Um, it's quite even just don't look too closely. And I just love how it came out. It just makes um, a hoodie slightly different. And I, I don't wear the hood up terribly often, I, I um, but just to have it, and because I'm permanently cold, a nice little bit around your neck. And I just think it gives a little um, a little extra detail. And I was recently watching the lovely Amelia from So Amelia, and she had put a Liberty frill into a beautiful um, sweater that she had made with um, very interesting seam lines on the sleeves. And she put two frills in there in Liberty. So it looks beautiful, Amelia. So anybody out there, if you have Liberty fabric, if you have any fabric that you just love, think about putting it into another make because it really, it just makes such a difference. It just elevates it and definitely, yeah, I would highly recommend it. And it's just fun to do because you can. If you dream it, you can make it. So what else? Um, yes, yeah, so I make the size 12 in the hug hoodie and I make a size medium in the hot coffee. So I just took the, the medium hood, which fits absolutely perfectly. Um, and what I love about the um, hot coffee pattern is the neck binding in the pattern. So I'll pop in a picture of what that looks like. It's a beautiful kind of oval neck binding at the back. And I put in a little label into that as well. And I use this fabric too. And I think it looks really, really nice. It looks, it looks very nice. And I know it's there. Can you even see it? Little tiny bit. There we go. There we go. So love these patterns and love how this came out. I'm going to be making more uh, coffee hug hoodies in future for sure. I really, really like them. Maybe in a more kind of sweater knit or a fleecy fabric. I think it'd be lovely coming into the winter. So when I put this on Instagram um, and put it into the challenge, the Long Sleeves 22, um, a lovely lady contacted me and said, did you know about the challenge? So wrapped. So I quickly checked that out. And this is hosted by the Dahlia Society and Cloth Edit. And it's basically so a wrap garment or a faux wrap garment or a garment that has some sort of wrap detail, which I think this does in this little wrap over section here. So I was able to quickly add that to that challenge too. So out of my two makes, I managed to get three challenges which is really really good fun because I do like putting things into challenges and 
especially now that I didn't even know the challenge was going on that could put it into it. So there wasn't any pressure at all, which is fabulous. So yeah, so love this make, really, really do. Let me know what you think about the frill. I hope you like it, but yes. And if, if you are considering putting frills into anything, just do it. It's fabulous, you won't regret it. <laughs> And finally, I hope this video hasn't been too long for you. Uh, finally is my Heather blazer. And here it is. And this is probably one of my proudest makes to date. I absolutely love it. So um, on my plans video, you'll remember that this fabric was from my granny and it came to me via my aunt and then my mum who gave it to me. And it was just sitting around unloved in a pile for years and years and years and years. I've had it for at least six, seven years, probably more actually. And I was so afraid of doing anything with it, but I really wanted to do something with it. So in the end, I decided, right, let's just do a blazer and see how it goes. I can always make something out of it. So, and I am just so pleased that I decided to get around and just do it. So the uh, Heather Blazer is a Friday Passion Company uh, passion. So I'll pop in the line drawings here. And there's been a load of them going around recently. I think it's it's the perfect season for Heather Blazers. It's a fabulous um, kind of slightly oversized boxy fit, um, but it's got the two piece collar. It's got a two piece sleeve. It's got patch pockets. It is fully lined in this marvellous emerald green fabric and uh, it's got a two piece back to it and then it's got the beautiful sleeves that you can roll up and show a peak of the lining it's just got every element but it just comes together so well and the instructions are fabulous so i was scared making this but it turned out well in the end so the as i say this um i think is probably a wool tweedy fabric i think because it didn't press terribly well and i should have used a clapper in hindsight to make it press better but it was okay to work with and I do enjoy a brooch. Um, and then the lining is from the Crafty Studio. It's a beautiful Cupro lining, which was lovely to work with. The only thing about this, between our house being renovated, I lost my rotary cutter for weeks and weeks, could not find it. So I had to cut out this, this, the Roscoe blouse with the scissors, which I hate doing. I cannot use scissors to cut out fabric. I have to have my rotary cutter. So the cutting of this was approximate to say the least so it was a miracle that any piece fit together at all I then found my um rotary cutter uh where I keep my jewelry I have no idea why I put it there but anyway I found it way too late for this but never mind so yeah the the cutting out of the pattern pieces was a little bit tricky because there's a lot of pieces so just take care there's um all the the main fabric pieces there's all the lining pieces and then there's all the different types of interfacing so it's quite involved so yeah Use a rotary cutter is my tip. Anyway, that aside, um, as I say, yeah, the lining is from Crafty Studio, which is perfect. It needs knit and woven interfacing. Um, so knit interfacing for the collar and the um, facing here. And then the, um, the whole of the front bodice is uh, interfaced with woven interfacing. So that's a bit tricky as well. But once you kind of keep your head about you, they have a lovely little um, chart as to which pattern pieces you need. So follow that and you'll be fine. I kept all my pattern pieces pinned to the to the fabric just so I knew exactly what I was working with because one sleeve piece looks very much like another sleeve piece. And in this, it was tricky to tell the front and the back as well. So yeah, top tip. So my measurements um, put me in a medium for the bust and then a large for the uh, waist and hips, which is my Friday Fashion Company size. But I just made the straight size medium um, and looking at the finished garment measurements, it was absolutely fine with the amount of ease. I think in hindsight, I could have done a small grading to a medium. I think um, the smaller the bust might have been a little bit better. But if I just wear a bigger jumper, it's absolutely fine. But I didn't have time or fabric to make a toile, so I just had to cut straight into this fabric. But it worked out really really well so I will pop in a few pictures of me wearing it anyway I absolutely love it and I just think it goes beautifully with this hoodie um it has excellent patch pockets but one thing about the patch pockets is they're very low dense this is the the pocket pattern placement that they show you on the pattern but it just gives a very small bit here but they are the perfect place when I put my hands in but there's just a very small gap here which looks a bit strange so if I make this again I might raise the pockets ever so slightly or um, make this tiny bit longer I didn't need to add any length to the bodice in this pattern um, I'm five foot nine and it's the perfect length on me I did add two inches to the sleeve length however uh, which I'm very, very happy I did. So the sleeves are the perfect length for me now. And then when you roll them up, you can get a little pop of the lining, which I really like. So if I wear them rolled up like this, that's the perfect length for me. So I definitely needed those two inches. 
and I haven't tied it away any of the threads. Never mind. So yeah, I'm very glad I did the sleeves and um, that two inches extra. Um, the collar went in absolutely fine. I think it looks pretty good and the, the seam running down the back. Um, you stitch in the ditch all the way around here um, as one of the final steps and even that went fine despite me hating stitching in the ditch. Um, the the way you bag out the whole uh, jacket because the whole thing is lined you you do it through the um the back uh, the middle of the lining here so this is all open and then that's how you turn it around which means that when you get to that stage all your sleeves the end of your sleeves are perfectly enclosed all the hem of the jacket is perfectly enclosed as well and you are meant to hand stitch that but my hand stitching is terrible so i machine stitch that because nobody will see um the what else do I need to say before I pop it on for you? The way you insert the lining, uh, you get the lining and the main fabric to sit into the sleeve is very, very clever. I think that's a really nifty way of doing it. Um, and then the way you hem it, um, it gives the instructions in the booklet and even they say, this is tricky, do you want to watch our video? So I read the instructions and couldn't make head or tail of it, watched the video and it didn't make sense. So it is quite tricky, but the video is very good at explaining it. So I got the hang of it. This side went in beautifully. Look how perfect that is. This side, not so much. So I will still show you to give you an idea. It's not terrible, but it's not, it's not the best. So that, was, that one is a little bit wonky, but this side went in perfectly. So that was a little bit tricky, but the video is absolutely brilliant. So yeah, that's just how you, you even that off and, and fold that in, which is very, very nice. The only other thing that I could not figure out was they use this thing. It's I think it's called a lining strip. Basically, when you've still got the whole jacket turned inside out, you, you cut a tiny strip of your lining fabric, maybe about two inches, and you sew it to the sleeve and the sleeve lining at around here, basically, so then the, the fabric and the lining don't come apart inside that they're always nicely together. From the picture, I could not figure out what they were talking. It was purely when I went to watch the video that I twigged, oh, this is what they're talking about, because the in my opinion, the pattern drawing did not look anything like my garment at that stage. But so that's in here somewhere tucked away for nobody to see. But I do really enjoy those kind of tailoring aspects. So, yeah, I really enjoyed enjoyed that part. Um, the sleeve went in very, very nicely. Um, it doesn't have a kind of sleeve head. It's just a normal set in sleeve. Again, fully the sleeve is fully lined as well, which is really great. So it's very easy to get on and off. Um, I definitely would make this again. So even when I was making it, it came together so quickly. You you basically just make two jackets effectively. You make the shell and the lining, the, the main fabric and the lining, and then stitch them together. But the, the actual jacket comes together relatively quickly for what it is. And I was just so pleased with how it was coming together. And I was really, really excited to see the finished garment. So I would love to make a few more of these. I would love to make a summer version, so I'm thinking maybe a seersucker, maybe lined with a little cotton lawn or something I think would look beautiful. And then um, maybe a, a, a full on winter version, maybe in some shearling or something I think would look great, but I definitely would make this again. And yeah, I, I don't think I'd make any changes. Maybe for the summer version, I would size down because to make it less oversized because I wouldn't be wearing it, say, with a jumper underneath it. But then the winter one, I'd probably keep the sizing. So just so, so, so pleased with it. And the kind of the notch and the lapel and everything, yeah. I just love it. I really, really do. And I finished it off with a little um, label here that I got in my Kylian Machine advent calendar last year. I didn't get one this year. I'm kind of regretting not getting one anyway. So yeah, I've still got a few of these left over anyway. So yes, I really, really, really enjoyed it. I think that was everything that I want to talk about. Um, yeah, it's just fabulous the way it all comes together and just so pleased. And yeah, it's probably one of my proudest makes actually. So I will pop it in and give you a little bit of a twirl. And here it is. So this is the jacket and I think it goes nicely with this hoodie. I like the kind of uh, jacket hood vibe. And as you can see, the sleeves are the perfect length here and the pockets. Oh, I, I mentioned that it closes with a little button and uh, that's a self covered button. So yeah, just very, very happy with it. So delighted with this make, really, really like it. And I can't believe I made a jacket. So I would highly recommend the Heather Blazer. I really, really like it. Take it off because it's pretty warm. Um, so thank you very, very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you'd like to leave a comment below, I'd love to hear from you or if you have any questions on any of these makes. Um, as always, I really enjoy hearing from all of you. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing. Um, I'm hoping to come back to you very soon with my winter pl winter plans video. Yes, um, which hopefully in a week or two to show, show it, I'll hopefully get made up maybe kind of December, January, February time. We'll see how it goes. 
but yes that's everything from me thank you so much for watching and uh, i will see you all again very very soon take care bye